<laughs> wow. Bring it. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the wind down. Thank you so much for joining us. This is a moment in your week and ours when we get together, we grab a glass, and we discuss the world of delicious things. We are interested in anything and everything that is fermented, distilled, grown, nourished, and served. See, you have, that was smooth, yeah. you know. That's also why my wife married me. <laughs> Nicely done. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, I think we're on. Hello, I think Rolling. we're back. <laughs> this is going to be a very fun show today. That was the wind down. Good night. <laughs> Each Thanks week for we strive to share with you our interests and experiences, and we hope that you will do the same with us as well. You can do so by visiting us at our not our Facebook page, you can, you could. but primarily you can get all the information on our website at thelip.tv for all the information that you need to get in touch with us. My name is Sonia Magdevsky. I'm a winemaker, journalist, and suburban farmer, and today with my co-host Brandon Bartlett, Senior Sales Manager of Beam Global. We are so thrilled to have in studio <laughs> with us, and we can get through it today, <laughs> the charismatic and the enigmatic Keith Sarlis of Sarlis & Sons. Sellers and Sons is a vineyard and winery operation, family owned to the core, 100%, in Los Olivos, California. They farm a number of different varietals. They first planted the first vineyard in Ballard Canyon on the east end, um, on a southwest facing slope with terraced hillsides uh, in the mid-90s. Uh, in 2003, they had their first vintage with a couple of extra grapes they had hanging around, and they were hooked. They had another vineyard that they purchased uh, in 2006, and that's called the El Camino Real. Um, and their employee list reads like this. Husband, father, sons, brother, sister, mother, grandfather, daughter, uncle, cousin. Their credo is, if I can find it, live. We live to honor those that have come before us and prepare the way for those yet to come. Cheers. Cheers Nicely done. That. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you for being with us Thank today. you. This is fun. I'm in, I'm in Los Angeles. I'm in the other LA. This is great. <laughs> They the other, oh, Los Olivos, oh, that's right, sorry. Dollars and Cents makes about a couple thousand cases purchased primarily through the tasting room only. Yep. And one thing you should know is if you're a wine snob, don't bother going because you need to have fun and you need to enjoy the environment and eat cupcakes. That's right. So tell us, who is Keith Sarlis? Oh, oh, geez, that's like, <laughs> oh, ready, go. Okay, um, you know, who am I? Two words or less. Before got, the show, well, it yeah. was sort of LBC to... Well, yeah, you know, well, who am I? Um, I, I, get, I get to play a pretty great role in my family. And um, I get to be the guy who brings together every different person in our family's talent or passion and pull them in and make them part of what we're doing. And... So if you're good at this, we're going to find a place for you. You're good at this, we're going to cram you in. And then all of a sudden, everything we're doing just becomes this huge snowball effect of passion. And we fight like passionately, like crazy, like, you're crazy, we should never do that. And, <laughs> and then we'll go to lunch. By, yeah, then we'll go get a sandwich. You know, <laughs> then like, it's over, you're crazy, you're going to fail. And then usually that's said to piss me off enough that I'll say, I'll show you, you know, and then here we go. Something tells me you would normally like crazy, though. Oh, yeah, crazy's good. I'm just saying. I don't mind. You know, it's... I, being by myself is the worst, because that's when I'm actually <laughs> up in here, so that's the terrifying part. But, so yeah. how many family members actually work together? I know um, it's your dad and your uncle. My dad, my uncle, uh, my cousin Brad, just graduated from Point Loma. Um, Congratulations. He, yeah, we're, we're, he is the first male Sarlis to graduate from college, so that's pretty cool. I'm one class short, my dad's one class short. Uh, my brother just graduated, which we're very proud of. Um, <laughs> which is great. Um, and Brad, basically, his car was running. He got his diploma. All his stuff was in his truck, and then Headed boom, up north. straight up north. Um, wow. So, and Brad has uh, been such. It's so great to have him there um, in part of it because he, just like my dad and my uncle, had this, this, uh, you know, yin and yang relationship. Brad and I are that, and we're just kind of continuing this 
pursuit. And so Brad is really Brad likes inventories and he likes spreadsheets and he likes as he likes to say cool. he, he likes to tap gauges on the train and then I get to go out and do great stuff like this and lay track and blow up mountains and Brad's like trains gonna be on time no <laughs> nice. problem you know and so it's, it's so you win it's yeah it's <laughs> it's really fun to be able to fly the jet like a a, a test pilot you know because we have no idea what we're doing um, well, and I, if there's a guy down on the ground that you're like he's like okay listen don't make a hard left because you're gonna hit a town you know and you're like oh great no problem so veer that way yeah that's what that's who we are so <laughs> <laughs> how about that perfect. You got the bug. Yeah. While you were still living in Bellflower. The bug to what? The Long Beach, the farming bug. Um, yeah, and I, I got it by proxy. Um, my grandfather, who this is a photo of him, uh, his father died when he was young. He basically, classic depression era, made it to California. His, he was a dairy supply salesman. Never owned a dairy, um, but... Uh, was he came calling all. Yeah, with Didn't you know, know anybody. You, pretty much, you know. Oh. And then pretty soon, little pieces. Uh, during the war, my great uncle John, one of the first wines we ever made was called Purple Heart, which is Dutch for purple. Um, purple Heart, and we have a picture of John on it. We have John's flag and everything in there. And I think that one goes for like four hundred and eighty dollars. Yeah, that's how much the last person paid. <laughs> yeah, well, right now, right, later, right now, later you buy more. one, it's five yeah. fifty. That's how this works. It goes up right? every we'll, time. We'll go that's into right. the whole pricing uh, situation <laughs> later. <laughs> Everybody's gonna know my stupid. I secret love the philosophy. Now, though. Okay, maybe we won't tell anybody. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so Purple Heart. I he, yeah, he. Well, Purple Heart was named for him, and then from then on out, it's been the wine that uh, best exemplifies what we've done in the vineyard this year that we're proud of, and. Uh, two years ago, it was our solo Syrah. I was a picture of my grandpa pre-married. Uh, then <laughs> it's solo. Hey, Sorry, I thought it was funny. You know? uh, then we had, uh, last year, we had one called Father. And a picture of my grandpa holding the birthday cake. Uh, this year, we have oh, his, cool. which is our cab, which is probably my, secretly, my favorite wine. Because you can't grow cab in the San Ynez Valley. Oh, how dare you? But yet, we sell our cab to people in Napa. You know, and so it's like, yeah, right. We can't grow this. We'll, we'll grow it as best we can. Right. I'll show and, you. Well, we just That's have one to... of those things where I mean, so many times people want to tell you exactly what they want you to believe or what they think that they totally. need to follow, and then you just have to say, "That's fine. You do your thing. We're gonna do our thing," yeah. and you just keep forging ahead. Well, because no, I mean, you know, you're the one who has to pave the way. And you know, even bigger than that, it's like we we I didn't come up in wine. You know, I I my first winemaker friends were. Got, you know, at a coffee shop, and they came in, and they hung out, and, hey, cool, you know, sweet. And we were growing <laughs> grapes, and then we were really excited to taste wine made with our grapes, you know, and that was amazing. And we never developed any bad habits, but we're, we are, I would say everyone in our family has this feeling of this tyranny of self. And the tyranny of self is we need to work harder than everybody else because we're, they know more than us. So if everybody else works eight hours, we work 12. And if everybody works five days a week, we work seven. And by doing that, we're like gaining a little bit. But then we're gaining intimate knowledge in, in our farming of little bits and pieces of it. And because we're in the vineyard so much and we're there and there's so many of us, it's kind of like if you've ever seen anybody in our family, we all kind of look alike. So it's like having these replicants of yourself out there, all like <laughs> mini me. Totally, and, and literally, and calling back going, how hot is it? Where are you right now? And you're like, I'm over here. Go find, you know, take the temperature. And it, you know, because it's 100 degrees where I'm at. So go look. And then you run over and we have all these, you know, thermometers all over the place. And it's like, yeah, okay, over here. So we've, we have all of these different things and we're all working for this, this one goal that, you know, we don't, as we like to say, it doesn't. You can get an amazing amount of stuff done if you don't care who gets any of the credit. And the farming right. bug basically came well from said. my grandfather, and my dad wanted to live out. My dad took on his father's dream: raise cattle, grow something from the ground. So we have bison, longhorn, registered Angus, sheep, chickens, the whole deal. And that, is that in the Ballard Canyon? Yes, yeah, on Ballard Canyon, yeah, and it's and on El Camino now we oh, have cattle cool. over there as well. And um, and then my dad, you know, I, I loved it. And it was just, you know, being a kid that grew up in Bellflower, I had a cow in my backyard. So it was kind of part of my life. But it's also very weird that I'm in, you know, 605-591 freeway, and I have a cow. And the apartment <laughs> no complex behind that. us, you know, we'd 
<laughs> but you a cow. You raise it for food. Though, yeah, right? we butcher yeah, a cow in our not... backyard, and there's an apartment complex behind us, and just like nine people looking over the fence as we have <laughs> this thing strung up, you know, and they're like, yeah, we should yeah, move. You know? Totally, it's like, what are you doing, you know? And like the first time I'm eight, I cried, you know, I ran in the house, I don't want to see this. And then yeah. the next time, you know, picking up poop from a cow for, yeah. you know, two years, you're like, how soon you kill that thing, you know? Well, you have to know where it comes from. I mean, we've, oh, lost, yeah. we lo we've lost sight of that so often, and you've sort of oh, connected I, to that tremendously. I love how on your website... I know where my meat comes from, right? Which is the most important. Yeah, totally. I love on the website when you... Uh, they have these amazing videos where they're... You should check out the website, sarlersonsons.com. Is that correct? Yeah, but spell it. S-A-A-R-L-O-O-S-A-N-D-S-O-N-S.com. There's a... Sale on vowels, so we bought two. Man, nice job. <laughs> Thank you. But they all These are the jokes, people. <laughs> Keep up. Keep up. On the website, first of all, it, the website is a plethora of information. You Home have brew. to go check it out. So if we miss something today, I hope we don't. Everything is on there. But they have these amazing videos where they, um, I think it, you are, do you have a camera on the tractor? Uh, we we have the... a GoPro. I'm, I am a, oh, cool. I, wine moves very slowly, and I like I like toys, you know, gadget kid. And so anytime, um, I have a lot of friends in the, in the digital world, so anytime something new comes out, like right. I get the, I got the 4S like three days before it came out, you know, I'm that, What's that the guy. What's the 4S? Uh, iPhone. iPhone. Oh, um, sorry, you can but tell you know, where I'm hey, at in yeah. that world. You're, but you're a farmer, <laughs> you know, we're the digital so farmer. And uh, by doing that, you know, uh, it's just tools. Yeah. A, a tractor with uh, a bucket on it is a tool. A, a shovel is a tool. This is, a, you know, we use tons of tools. And one of the things that we feel is so important to us because we're almost, we're documenting our journey. And not, not that we have a journey that's really interesting at all, but we're having a really good time as a family. And my goal or what I'm going to make sure with every last breath I have is that this business is here for 150 years that we, we have honored those that have come before us. I'm preparing the way for my kids, my grandchildren, right. and one day they want to honor me by putting me on a label. Best day of my life. Pretty cool. Um, how, well, old, uh, how old is Cash? My son is three. Okay, and so he doesn't really know what's going on yet. No, he does. By he, the way, I, I did wear this in honor you. of your son. I am a big fan, I'm yeah. a big fan. Um, we, we were going to name him Sue, that got ixnade yeah. a lot. Well, no, no. Sister I didn't want to abandon so, him. That's the thing, you know. right? right. Yeah. And my daughter's name's Brielle, and that's after the first independent city in the Netherlands, and we're a Dutch family, and she's one of the first daughters in six generations. Uh, wow. Brielle Hunter Sarlos, which is oh. just badass. For our Dutch her. viewers, dag hoe gaat het? Oh, smaak Hey, wait a hey. second. <laughs> say, say, das good. Das good. <laughs> das good. Um, all right. So yeah, my son. If yeah, we yeah. he he has been part of every harvest That's thus cool. far. This year we picked. He was all about Grenache Blanc. He f sits really well on top of the grapes as we're as we're moving and rides in the cab with my dad. And, you have a you great know, video of him harvesting. Yeah, you know and. Well, I also love that. Uh, yeah. uh, again, I was trying to say that you have. Uh, he puts a the GoPro camera on oh, yeah, the sure. tractor and he goes through the vineyards. And, yeah. and you have the writing that says, you know, we pass every vine 27 times per year yeah. on foot. 1,900 miles total traveled. I mean, per year. And then you have an amazing compliment from Chad Melville that you had said you are the yeah. offensive line of wine. Yeah. I mean, so how did did you learn to farm? Um, LBD, learn by doing. You know, m most things, we get asked that question a lot because it's like, how did you get to do this? You know, and then I always go, what, what do you do? Yeah. And they say, well, I'm an aerospace <laughs> engineer. And I'm like, how did you, how did get, you to get to do that? <laughs> you know, it's like, we've been doing it like, actually, you can see our vineyard in that picture. You see the terraces on the way right hand side in the house? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's us. Hey. Ta-da! We're neighbors. We, that's we <laughs> Common to be Mads Winery. Way over there by us. <laughs> we can um, also sorry. show the, uh, the front of your, web, or the first page of your website if you want. Oh, we got that, we got that pulled cool. up there somewhere. Um, so, and, you know, so that was the most you? ADD uh, thing I've ever done. Hey, look, a bird, you know. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Ooh, cows. Yeah. <laughs> hey, cows. 
Um, we were talking about what? You were talking uh, about, oh, so you're on aerospace. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's true. Long, but, you know, you how do we then? get to do it? Like, Wes Hagen, who you've had on, yep. you know, the Google of wine, and he always says he's, Great, the, he's the Google of wine because, number one, he does know more than anybody else. But, number two, you ask him a question, then you get eight answers yeah. that have nothing to do with it. I call it a mega mind. It. Perfect. <laughs> right. And so, anyway, uh, we got into it by, it was an apple orchard. And then, you know, secretly behind every, you know, good man is a woman that makes sure he needs to be great kind of a thing. And my mom has always been that. My grandma's always been that. We have very... Uh, for as big and loud of men we are, the women in our family are by far better. And we understand that, and we marry way up, you know, the whole <laughs> deal. And um, my mom, you know, we had an apple orchard there, and we tore it out because we spent more money on, you know, fertilizer, fertilizer yeah. on, than uh, we had in apples. And so mom goes, there's, you know, there's grapes around here. We should tear it out, and we should plant grapes. And then we asked Wes there, and we kept asking question, 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 question. And then pretty soon it's like, oh, okay, yeah, well, let's put it in. So we planted. Um, Louis Lucas, by the way, takes responsibility for suggesting the terracing of your hillsides. Okie dokie. <laughs> Perfect. But, but, but you know what? If Louis came, Lucas did I'm good with that. No, right? Totally. Care, he know? came into the totally. tasting room in Los Alamos. He has vineyards all around there. And he came in I don't want to shoot ago. a hole in this story because no, I can use I it. I can totally do it. <laughs> you should. No, I'm not going to. Because Louis Lucas, dude, that's like Godfather <laughs> status. You know, it's like the Godfather said, yep, yep, sure enough. Yep. So he said. That guy knows more. That guy's forgot about more about grapes than I'll ever know. So who cares? Well, he had said, you know, he asked me why. So it's my grapes from I said tear out the vineyard. And he was asking yeah. where it was. I said Ballard Canyon. He says, Oh, across from yeah. Sarlon. I said, Yes, of course, it's across from Sarlon and Sons. And he says, Oh, well, I suggested when they first got the property they should terrace it. So that's a good okay. story awesome. to add to your repertoire. Is that the whole blowing up part? You said no. you get to blow things well, up? Yeah. I'm gonna let it run. <laughs> oh, Lucas okay. said he did that. I'm good with that. All right. He's Perfect. a good guy. He's a dude. Yeah. He's like, that's a man, you know. <laughs> Don't mess with a guy that could like make you go away Blow in shit the up. grape world. Yeah, I want to say, uh, before we get too far into sure. it, I am drinking the Grenache Blanc. Yeah, hers. Is that is delicious. by far... Um, so hers, right there. Yeah. That's a picture of my grandmother on the label. And, um, oh, Thanks. we... Oh, yeah, sure, man. Uh, the, we basically called this... It started off... We had a Chardonnay called Daughters, and then we don't make Chardonnay anymore. Uh, so the Daughters is gone. And it's, one yeah. of the things I should tell you, we don't remake any of our wines. It's one time, that's it. We, so you'll never make Grenache Blanc again? No, we'll never make a hers, oh, this Lord, style, that kind of a thing. So so will it have the same name, no. just different blend? No. So there won't be another his, there no. won't be another hers? No. Oh, wow. That's great. And the reason we do that is I don't... It's very triumphal -y. Well, it's like, we'll talk about Maker's Mark, you know? We'll talk Let's. about you guys. Um, one of the greatest, you know, I, a lot, as we like to say, it takes a lot of scotch and a lot of whiskey and a lot of bourbon to make wine. Mm -hmm. um, and I, that's what I love. I love scotch. It's great. Well, you know, I love I how love you bourbon. said on your site that you need to leave work sometimes. To you do. You totally something. do. You know. <laughs> you you um, and I are going to become good friends. I, trust me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right oh. there, dude. I can already feel hey, it. Beep, beep. Back <laughs> yeah. up the truck, dude. I'm ready. I got a pallet jack. I'm ready to rock. And then I'll I call you in trade, two weeks. I see a trade happening. Uh, no, 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 no. God, we, no. That we would, will each pay for every single every bottle for Legally. each other's. Yes. We, we, we're pirates, not maybe. Yes. We'll act through a negotiant. Right. And so uh, each one of our wines, you know, we're, we're basically trying to express our vineyard every year. I have two kids. I have a son and a daughter. Um, if, yeah, yeah, yummy. If, uh, I'd have a real hard time if I had another son um, making him be my, be cash. That would, that's wrong to him. That's wrong to my other son. I need to let them be who they are and express themselves. So our, our winemaking philosophy, uh, we don't have philosophy. I, I just try to church it up. <laughs> Everybody says they have a philosophy in yeah, winemaking. So I don't even know not what that is. A philosophy is a philosophy. Yeah, we're, you know, we're, <laughs> I don't care about nothing. You know, that go, he's, oh, don't worry about him. He's a nihilist. Um, come on, big Lebowski reference. Let's follow that up, right? No, I'm here. All right, we're keep, keep it going. Um, as long as we don't bring up Boingo, Boingo, we're fine. Oh, Dead Man Party. Excellent. Um, so... One of the things we do, it's like, okay, we, we know kind of what yeast we're going to use, and most of that is like, like our mutual David Potter, right. it's like he, that guy, I mean, talk about a winemaker. You guys got to get him on the show. He's, I've he's, asked. 
So you have to ask. I'll make again. him do it. I'll do my it's best. It's the shout but out Dave, to Dave Potter, municipal winemakers. You gotta do. You gotta do like. You gotta show. do the like. No, I just M- talked to him today. He said yes. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you Done are real. impressive. Yeah. Um, but like Dave, you know, uh, it's like, he 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 does our yeast choice, which I think is genius. You know, and it's like, don't make sure I don't screw up. You know, and that's kind of the way we go. Yeah. And so, his knowledge level and and that it's like okay then that's it that's what we're gonna do and it's like what day do we pick it. You know, right. and then <clears throat> we pick it literally based upon a seven-year-old's like call shot. You know, was well, that so, with the Brielle? Was yeah, that my if daughter. I taste the seeds. If that I was spit amazing. the seeds and I do that, and if it burns right here, go. You know, and it's really pretty <laughs> cool to I, have. I don't us. know the story. Who's who's? Oh, my daughter's Brielle. Website. It's on our website. Uh, <laughs> yeah. we have a, my daughter comes out and before the first harvest, you know, we'll go out and we're just hanging out in the vineyard and like just spending more time there. And she, if you taste it, and you know, she'll spit the seeds in her hand. And uh, if a scene is green, it's not ready. Yeah. If it's green and brown, almost. It's got the ready. little brown nub on it, right? But if it looks like kind of like a roasted bean, you yeah. know, like a coffee bean, you're good. You're right there, you know? And then it's like taste, taste, taste. And then, you know, you do the voodoo magic of pH and acidity. Right. And then you sugar based upon how much, you know, how much you want to have fun, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like, this one's a baby maker, dude. That thing's awesome. Um, well, I think the one thing that's really extraordinary, yeah. and particularly as you said that you don't make you know, the same wine ever again. We, we is... want to let it express itself the best it can because right. guess what? You know, we can have this whole, like, high flute and argument about terroir and whatever. But bottom line is it's, it's where we are this year. It's the farming we did this year. It's if we walk through a row right-handed this direction or left-handed this direction. I mean, all those little factors will take place in, in, in the way that vine goes. Right. If, we, if we prune too early, you know, then, uh, and our vineyard's cold, but we know our vineyard's cold, so we'll have bread break too early, and oh, we might get a frost. Um, if we go through and we're like, oh, we need to head train this way, or we're going to go through, like we go through, we head train and hedge. You know, we cut back, and then we do leaf removal, and then we do this, and we look at it, and it's, it's really this... You know, I got in a car today, and I drove straight here. I took a freeway south, you know, actually, but the whole time I was driving west. It's stupid. Right. So <laughs> how'd you get here? <laughs> well, you get on the 101 south, but you no, know no, what? Santa Barbara <laughs> is actually east and west I know. of L.A. It's so dumb. <laughs> and Reno's farther west than L.A. We're stupid. So the long story short is when you're Fresno. in a, when you're farming, you are sailing. And you're in a boat, and if the wind is blowing against you, you tack and you take a hard tack this way, and you go different directions. And that's why we view our farming really as this songwriting aspect. Going back to Chad Melville. Right. The songwriting aspect is we write these songs, and we, we 364 days we work, so that one day the winemaker can come out, taste it, and go, I want to pick on Tuesday. And you go, you got it. And then we'll fight and fight and fight, because my dad's like, I think we're ready. I'm like, we're not ready. I think we're ready. No, we're ready. You know, that yeah. it's like... It's like when my wife was pregnant, she's like, I can't wait to get this thing out of me, you know, and we're, we're gonna, not ready. We're not ready, you know, but it's like being pregnant every year. That's what it right. is to be a grape farmer. And like, oh God, what are we gonna do? It's just tons of ringing hands and, you know, stressing. But each year is so different. It's so different. I mean, how can you possibly make the exact same wine? That's where because we come back to it's Maker's Mark. Mark. The, oh, Maker's, Maker's Mark. Mark is a, com- I'm sorry, yeah. it is a whiskey, it is. but it is a commodity. When you look at Samuel Adams, which is, you, Arguably the world's largest craft brewer, right? Um, mm-hmm. It's true, but they're doing yeah. stuff that's out there. Right. Yeah, you know? it's still less than one percent. Right, of, and so, but know. when they're tasting, they want that product to be the same. Yes. You go to a grocery store. You know, there's grocery store wine made by you know the big boys that you know literally spill more than we make. Yeah. And that wine is consistent, and that's awesome because but that that's is what a commodity. Are looking for exactly. Okay. So when you start getting into, let's say, Wes Hagen, Chad Melville. Uh, artiste who's by us, you know, they're, they're, the list goes on and on where you walk in the front, the, you know, your name's on the sign, you're in there, kind of yeah. Louis Lucas, you know. Th- what we're trying to do is we are trying to express ourselves the best way possible through our vines and then sing that song. You know, the notes are already written. Uh, you can make a, a bad wine from a great grape. You can make a good wine from a good grape, but the only way to make a truly spectacular wine is start with a spectacular grape. And by doing so, you are singing that song. Like there are songs that a an eight-year-old can sing that just melt your heart. You know that you're like, oh god, that's beautiful. 
Um, but then there's other songs that are just complicated and difficult, and they take a level of appreciation. That's the same thing with wine. You know, you walk into a, a crazy Bordeaux, and if you don't know this and this and this and these little special aspects to it, you're, those are kind of lost. You're like, hey, it's wine, great, you know. But to the person who has has played and played the music or listened to a lot of this and listened to a lot of that, then all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, you know. That's why jazz is amazing because it's all of the weird crap that nobody else did that all of a sudden exploded <laughs> through jazz and then also through blues right. and then through like punk scene and all these different pieces. But if you if you just walked into it, you're like, oh, cool, music. But, you know, music's this high line, and then you get all these little subgenres, and then you start finding the little pieces you like, and then you appreciate it. Or you get somebody like uh, Black Keys who does blues, Oh, dude, blues, how did punk, you know, dude? Blues, <laughs> punk, everything. That is my band, you know, dude. It's, I don't it's even a, drink. We're drinking his right now, just okay, so you yeah. know. Is, we all want to drink it together. No, I think I have the cab. You have, yeah, it's his. Yeah, his it's is the cab. Ex- oh, so I the mean, Grenache Blanc. Let's go cheers. back to that super Hello. quick. Cheers. Basically, it's hers because that cheers. is the wine in our family that every girl drinks by the I gotta hide the rest of it level. I, I'm not a chick. I understand but why you understand, I did. it's yummy. But you understand good. why so it's yummy. good? It's, it's the only thing it lacks, and one of the things we do that's so far nerdier than anyone else, a good friend of mine, Paul Tarr, is a senior fellow at Caltech. He has taken every single one of our wines, and we have done stuff that only Gallo does, which is kind of crazy. We put our wines through, like, literally million-dollar machines. Don't tell anybody. Um, uh, well, that was cool. <laughs> we got to do that more. Of. Um, and that million-dollar machine, we're looking at our wine through like, spectrally, chemically, molecularly, and, and knowing what's in it. And why that, do you do this? We're doing that because one of the things that's so crazy about wine is it's so subjective, and that's beautiful because you can come up with all kinds of really great stuff. But you're just looking at it. You're not altering it. No, we're, we're just at looking at it, it okay. after the fact. All right. And so when you look at that wine, what's crazy about this Grenache Blanc is it, it is more complex than a lot of red wines but it lacks something called a pigmented flavonoid. This is nerd, crazy, like nerd on nerd. Flavonoid is one of our words. Really? It's like the duck drops down. And Perfect. Yeah, flavonoid. Everybody just so, wants something. Pig, pigmented <laughs> flavonoid, it lacks that. But that is a more complex wine than a lot of reds. And so when people are like, oh, you know, people think of white wine as being entry level, you know, that's lies. And that's totally. big lies, you know. Good, good is good. So it's kind of one of these things where if we go to music, you know, when I taste wine, I hear stuff. It's like, oh, this is French horn. Like when I get a lot of white wines, it's like, okay, trumpet, French horn, trombone, you know, brass instruments. And it's like, what song is it playing and what instrument's playing it? I Love do that it. nonstop. I've never heard anything like that Love before. It. No, I haven't you either. F- first. Yeah. <laughs> That's also because I'm you like, You heard it here on the wine dog. Yeah, no, 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 it's kind of cool. But that like when good. I taste our cab, you know, um, it's very Peter and the Wolf kind of a thing. You know, when the bird comes in. I do get, get some oboe out of it. Perfect. I'll be honest. I love the oboe, you know. <laughs> um, there's a wolf. Yeah. But, like, this is, you know, the whole point of this and where I'm really proud mm. of it is, is it, it turned into being this wine where, it, like, one of the things that scares it's me delicious. is, like, you have a 98-point wine, right? And, dude, what is that? You know, because I don't buy my albums based on what Rolling Stone gives it. Yeah. So why would I buy my wine right anyway side note no i'm just i'm glad I'm oh glad you're do you want to know my up. scores on I'm this 150 up. thumbs up on this one <laughs> nine stars on that yeah but out of how many thumbs like 20. oh okay. so it's like wow right. you know and four oboes on this one well I, we had a wine last week that yeah. and she was making fun of me so i'm glad you're here because yeah. i said <laughs> i tasted harmonica and sitar and she looked at me like i was crazy dude he is that. crazy, but that's I like that. going. <laughs> Dude, well, it's like, you know, if everybody was normal, this world would be a pretty boring place. Yeah, it would. But, I mean, I do, I, I do love that you had said, you know, about the song of the wine, because I had a gal come into the totally. Disney room on over the weekend. She says, well, what's your philosophy? And I said, I just want the fruit to sing. I just want, Ooh. I don't want to mask the yeah, fruit. Yeah, we're right there. Way to go. I just want to sort of say come what across it has the road. to say. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, and I just think that whole section is Are just, you proud of everyone you have? I love Dude, everyone. That not that it? That's I don't hilarious. care what score well, it is. What's even no. better? That's I, nothing. I'm proud of every wine she has. So, I mean, they're hers. <laughs> yeah. So, she's supposed to be. <laughs> totally. But, like, I'm... I, okay, he's not so crazy. No, okay. but, it, <laughs> no yeah. but that's... But, but, but I, like, I, I'm stoked that I can look her in the eyes and say, I love your wines. I had that same comment. Yeah. My buddy, one of my best friends, Jeff Seek, who you look a lot like, yeah. 
Like Handsome. this morning, damn sexy. Yeah. We're actually, we don't get invited to dinner parties together because you know how you and I are now like well, yeah, friends, so, you know. you know, kind of thing. Jeff is that, but it's, we have similar humor yeah. and then pretty soon nobody's you talking and, and we're drunk. You and I great. A lot of cigars, a lot of yelling. Like, you want to talk, oh, no, just, just talk louder, you know. Uh. I want to be heard louder. Um, and Shh. like today, Jeff goes, you know, I'm really stoked that when I tasted your wines that came out, he's like, oh, thank God they're good. You know, yeah. he's like, I want them to be good. But at the very end of the day, you know, why am I here today, honestly? Yeah. Because I like your show, I think it's cool, but I want more people to know about us. But we're not gonna make that jump to store shelf because I'm, I'm not gonna abandon my grandfather on a shelf. I'm just yeah. not. It's not gonna happen. Um, and so he was yeah, alive. This is the most like spastic interview you've ever done. No, this is excellent. Actually, my dad, no, he was alive he when was we alive purchased when the property that had apples on it before him. So and he understood where you were going, and he must have been he, completely satisfied was, and just fulfilled that you, know, you were carrying on the dream. I think in a weird way, um, my grandfather suffered from Alzheimer's towards the end. And Sorry. Which is, pro watching your hero fade yeah. Oh, yeah. Is, not a, is not something anybody should have to do. No. That's number two after your kids, you know, that's just it. My dad was standing on a driveway looking at things, you know, and he goes, Dad, why did, you know, you could have done this anytime you wanted, you know, why, why didn't you do this, you know, like my dad made this jump, but my dad's also the guy that's like made the jump and was calling me like, when are you coming, you know, and I'm like, I don't know, he's like, I'm lonely, get up here, <laughs> like we can do a lot of good stuff by ourselves, but there's nothing we can't do together, yeah. bottom line. Particularly with family. Yeah, and it's like, they and, got your back and we have time. very short memories, which is also very good. Um, my you wife, forget all the arguments. That's, well, and it, it, you understand what the major goal is. Yeah. You know, our goal is like, we're not, listen, we love each other, this is it. We, you know, we can fight amongst yourselves, but like my brother, you know, if somebody picked on my brother, dude, that is, I can be the crap out of my brother all I want when I was a kid. <laughs> somebody else pushed him, dude, it was like so game over. on. Well, it doesn't know? matter what happens with the business, you still have each other. And I mean, and no matter what, we, yeah, as my dad says, we win other. together, we lose together. Yeah. That's it. And, um, so your dad asked. So where you stand? He goes, "Why don't you do this?" And my dad's, my grandfather basically said, "You know, I was never, I was never done raising you boys." I mean, my my grandfather, my dad, my uncle had a business, and they had one room that there was their office. There was no doors. There was no walls. Oh. So if you came in, my dad was sales. My uncle was operation. My grand grandpa just made sure, you know, as my dad like to say, my my grandpa made, gave, basically gave them bats and balls. And said, play this game, I'll make sure you don't murder each other. That was kind of like, he opened the mail and signed check, you know? Yeah. And, and these are like 25-year-old kids, and he's like, go do it. And then the door would close, and then he was like, You're, you guys are nuts. You'll never do it. It's the same tactic. But you would come in, and, and your operations, you'd yell at my uncle, who's operations, and say, sales is horrible. They're, they're blowing it. They said they'd do this. They'll never do it. My dad's sitting there like this, you know, working on something. He leaves, and there was no wall, so he knew exactly what that guy said, how he said it, and that was it. Right. And so he reacted to it, but you would never hold anything personally, you know? And that, I think that's one of the things that's always held over in our family is we're very, I'm not going to say conscientious about each other's feelings, but we understand that you need to say what you need to say to get your point across. And if we got to go hit the ground, like my cousin Brad said, me and my dad hit each other with hammers. Like, he comes in the room, and we're just, like, waiting to beat on each other with hammers. He wants to attack me, and I want to fight back. And then right. my, my dad and Brad are best of friends because they're my, just like my dad and my uncle are counterparts. Me and Brad are counterparts. So my dad loves Brad more than any, he likes him more than me. And then me and my Uncle Harv are, like, best friends. We talk on the phone 12 times a day. So <laughs> I think he's calling right now. Yeah, I know. It's like, I, I turned it off, and I threw it over there. Um, but, you know, back to the, I guess back to the beginning, why are we the offensive line of wine? Like, why do we make our wines this way? Um, it's, number one, it's because we don't, we don't know any better. And this, this was right for us. And we're really proud of what we do. We're really proud we of the be. farming we do. Um, we're, we're really proud of our byproduct, which is wine. You know, most people go into the thing. I mean, Charles and Sons should be the name of a plumbing company. That's not a wine yeah. company. You know what I mean? There's, it's a truck. It's like, Charles and Sons, hey, check out my truck, you know? But I always um, say, I mean, to me, it's like alcohol is a byproduct of, of wine. Totally. I mean, it's just, it's the grapes, it's the vineyard, it's the season, it's, it's everyone who works on it. I mean, the fuzzy and warm feeling you get is the bonus. 
I mean, everything, all the nuances and the subtleties and the flavors are what's the most important and how you got there. I think the buzz or the warm feeling or whatever is the inevitability of that 364 days of how awesome it was. Okay. People use words that are superlatives that are, are, you know, the big book of wine thesaurus, which is very impressive. You know, when people go, oh, I get a lot of wet leather. <laughs> I'm like, how much wet leather do you keep in your mouth? You know, <laughs> like, basis. and if you do, we have a we, let's talk about other things yeah, besides but, but how many you elbows? and you're like, how many elbows? Well, you know, Peter and the Wolf. You go back uh, to maybe the time. Elbow. I don't know. <laughs> right, um, but you know, take give me five, give me ten minutes, right. standing in a vineyard. We'll give you an hour. Perfect. Give me an hour. <laughs> Come out. Actually, do good on the road. Come see us. I love it. We will. You stand out in a vineyard for ten minutes. Right, you you literally and you know you you're, you have a playlist you're listening to, you're walking in dirt. There is, there is a, there's chaos. Or like those vines, that is chaos. That is everything trying to throw you out. That is that vine growing one inch a day, over the course of two weeks. If it takes you two weeks to get back to it, you've lost a foot of ground. You know that's bottom line. This chaos that's happening and these grapes that are forming, that are throwing out there, that are doing everything they can to get to wine. They're going to become wine on their own with or without us, bottom line. And we're, we're trying to create order amongst that. And you stand out they there. Wanna like, they want to go like, they want to crazy. They want to go like, everywhere. And you're trying to Like if we look at this photo them. right now, right now where that Viognier sign is, that wine, that sign is actually gets hit in the face by wind every day at 3.15 in the afternoon. Bottom line, I know this. And it blows straight down that canyon all the way, from us to Stoltman to Honada to all the way down to Larner. Right. This is the way the wind blows. And it blows that way. If it's gonna rain, the wind blows from the other direction. Just little, these are tweaks, right? And that happening, and you take 10 minutes, and you're out there, and you have your music, you have Johnny Cash, you have this, you have whatever you like, and you're listening to it. Okay. And you stand out there, and you see buzzard circling, you see hawks you see this and you feel the cold northern pacific wind blowing in your face over the hill to that i you have learned more about my wine that and what it is than any bullshit i'm ever going to say to you with words because that is what it is wine is merely the expression of 364 days until we make the decision to remove god from the equation and throw ourselves into it why do you keep saying 64 because you on the 365th day you pick. You pick. Oh. Yeah. Well, we have a video Sorry. of harvest. Duh. Duh. Let's Don't go. you know nothing? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you own any vineyards? <laughs> you want, wait, hold on. You want to hear my favorite thing of all I, time? I just got. I just got. Flanked. You totally did. <laughs> I just got flanked. You got by El Capone. Duh. Like, my, you don't own any vineyards. You're going to love this. No, we did so not. My, we my buddy Jeff Seek, which you just <laughs> personified, he was at a party, and me and my buddy and a couple other guys, winemakers were there, and he had a bunch of his friends, and he was over, you know, from over the hill and just hanging out, and just in the classic, this is how I know you're one of my friends yeah. kind of a thing. He Can said, me personally, or no, is no, no, not you. This is where he no, said, No, no, not down. you. No, you're my Never. friend. You're in. Um, he said urine. Yeah, no, no, no. If you have a truck and a shovel, you're in. Because, you know, <laughs> real friends will help you move. I mean, friends will help you move. Real friends I have will help a, you move a body. Yeah. Oh, you I have a Courage Axe. Perfect. Oh, you do? I do. Best made. Um, I, duh. I have one. Now I can uh, duh you. I, I'm in. You haven't done me yet. Okay, so Jeff Seek <laughs> literally turned to his friends just to make me and a couple of my buddies feel like the biggest jerks of all time. Yeah said to his friends, can you believe none of these, like said to me while we're standing with him, he goes, can you believe none of these people have a vineyard? Oh, like that. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. what? You know, oh, and I'm like, oh. seek you bastard, kind of a joke. And Daddy, see, they were throwing crab cakes <laughs> at me. Actually, my favorite line of all time when talking about my kids is when I go, I want to be so rich my kids play lacrosse. <laughs> That is still one of my favorite lines <laughs> no. of all time. Because you're like, lacrosse, yeah. you know. And what's, what's lacrosse? I know, it's an, <laughs> evidently a net with a ball and a, like I want an them apple. to play an oboe. Halai. Let's play halai. Can we play the video <laughs> yeah. of Harvest? No, uh, of sure. Let's do it. <laughs> of the 360, 364 days. That's right. And on the fifth day, this is what happened. Yeah. Almost. All right. I just hit play. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. All right. right. Here, scroll down. Yeah. Dude. Make it full screen. I think they're supposed to do it. Oh. Oh, it's going too fast. No, that's what it does. Oh. Is every single one of our photos that we took 
over the course of harvest. So basically three months. Perfect. This is three months of photos in three minutes. Amazing. So this is everything that we're doing, um, picking. There you saw Brad Sarlos, who's my cousin and partner. I love your, friend, new your emblem, jokes. by the way. Yeah. It's great. Thank you. There's my dad, uh -huh. Uncle Harv, Brad. There are probably some risque. There's my son, uh you know. <laughs> That's when I got, you know you're in trouble when you get home late at night and your son's standing there yeah. at your <laughs> stairs waiting for you like The Shining. Dad, where have Dad, you where been? Dad, where have you been? <laughs> Uh, this is when we had How Intelligentsia fun. Coffee come out. They had all their farmers from around the world actually come wow. to Los Olivos. We walked them through the vineyard and, and talked about the differences between, or the similarities between uh, coffee farming and grape farming. And it was, it was amazing to meet Kenyan farmers. And it's just instant we had that connection. It was great. They must have been, I mean, blown away, as you would be if you oh, were yeah. in their country it was looking amazing. at their vineyard. Well, farming's farming, coffee farming you know. Yeah, that's the best part about all of it. I love it. Now, what did you learn? I mean, I love the uh, the tanks and the samples. This is really oh, yeah. incredible. I mean, thanks. There's my dad and his uh, brilliant co-host. Do you and your dad farm together then today? This morning. In general. Oh yeah, every day. Every we yell at each other and throw rocks at. There's my son and my dad during harvest. There's Do you have sheep. family meetings? We actually had our big one uh, two weeks ago. Punched down. And we of yelled at each other for a while, <laughs> and then told each other that we love each other and that you're great, and then we. Got tired of talking to each other. Oh, did you see that? The, yeah. Did you, you know what that was? Mm -mm. Pick rosemary and throw it in when during harvest when you stink like a an ape. Pick rosemary and throw it in your uh, air conditioner vent, and so it starts blowing. It's oh, the wow. poor man, the poor man's uh, Christmas tree. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So right now, actually, on those photos, I wanted to. Oh, you saw the the vines are actually now turning from. Um, from green to orange, and that happens after we pick. And one of the things we do is we rip and prepare for rain as soon as possible. And what you're seeing now is actually the last time it's fruit, and between that last press, and it becomes wine, have which is kind of a magic yet? time. What's that? Have you started pruning yet? Uh, you know what? We have a little bit on some high high pieces, but all in all, we're not. We wait a little bit longer. Usually, end of January, beginning of February, um, because we've been. Pretty much, we don't stop working. We don't go on that month-long, awesome. you know, vacation. It's just us. So I love right. how it says harvest end. 2012 has begun. It begins the next day. I mean, it's amazing. You know, right yeah. when you harvest, I was like, you're in bottling, you're finishing, you're labeling, you're doing everything, and all of a yeah. sudden you're, you're there again. I mean, it's, the winemaking year is so fast. It's even though it seems like it's so long, it's, it's incredibly fast. It's this constant, you know, uh, uh, if you're a parent. You know, it's that first year of life of your kid every year. Hmm. And it's this birth aspect. It's this transformation from fruit to fermented fruit to the removal of those grape skins. Like we did a bunch of whole cluster Grenache this year, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and then when it actually becomes just liquid. And it was like, wow, that that's pretty cool. And then now... How they were so tight in the beginning, and then they just sort of let yeah. the juices. Yeah, and then go. this this next step of it is this incubation. You know, you put it, you try to choose the right barrels and talk to the right people and get like some barrels you're really stoked about. And we only use a very select group of barrels, but then we only buy two or three of any forest or any um, uh, cooper, so we can really in figure terms out of new oak. And turn yeah, we buy a lot of new oak. My, every year my truck hold is, there's more money in the back of my truck than my <laughs> truck is worth. Um, in New York, yeah, we buy, that is one of our biggest fun fights and it's a family. Hey, I gotta do a bank transfer to France. And he's like, <laughs> this is stupid, you know? And it's, how much? And I'm like, Volkswagen. We're buying a used Volkswagen to put, throw 25 cases of wine in. And they go, oh. And you know, and strangely enough, that's one of the things, like one of my best friends, uh, Cliff Chasen, he, uh, he, he's been part of our farming the whole time, you know, just really super great buddy. And, but then, you know, bring him to the winery. He's like, well, why does your wine cost 28 bucks? And then, you know, I can buy a $3 bottle over at Trader Joe's. That's and I'm cool. like, did you ask him how many bottles have you actually paid for? Well, this is my favorite. So I go, <laughs> do you drink that? And he goes, yeah. I go, dude, keep drinking that. And I go, why? I go, cause I want to know, I want you to listen, or I want you to watch this television show through a scrambled 
uh, cable box, you know, where it's like, you know, every, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, like my brain every day. Pretty much. And then he kept going, 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 and then I'm like, okay, now come up. I want to taste. You got. I want you to taste this. And he tastes it. And he's like, oh yeah, this is better. I'm like, oh great, you know. And then we went to the winery and we walked around and had a great time with his whole family. And he's like, how much does you know this barrel cost? I'm like, well, we do this and this, and we went through the whole process. And the end, he goes, how do you only charge 28 bucks for this yeah. stuff? You know. Right. And the the long story of it is, you know, back to it. If you want a commodity item, yeah, you can buy a commodity item, and then that there's going to be many like it, you know. But then if you want a, if you want a painting, there's there's posters, which is a printing press, yeah, and then there are paintings. And yeah, you can buy paint. There are people that want the go. same thing time after time. And after God time bless after those time. people yeah. because you know if you're, you know, the man who is the richest is the man whose thrills are the cheapest. Bottom line, you know, if you have yeah. cheap thrills, you're a rich dude. You know, I'm all white. Oh, wait a minute. But that's that's one. Of, I mean, that's one aspect of it. Um, the other wait, one I'm is I'm a billionaire. Then you are. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. To to professionalism. <laughs> Well, what has been your biggest learning curve? I don't have any idea what I'm doing, so everything's like really great. You know? <laughs> You're implying I would have learned something. You're implying I've learned from. <laughs> hey, listen, mistakes were made. You know what I mean? <laughs> listen, I'm not going to say there aren't. We make but, a mistake and we repeat it. <laughs> yeah, if, you know. Waka um, waka. Walk -a -walk -a. uh, <laughs> I mean, what is our? You know, we're having. A, but at some but here, point, you, by the way, at some point, you have to say, "I get it." At some know. point, it no. had to click. No way. It had to have. No way. Anybody tell... Here, you'll I'll, you'll gonna, feel too comfortable. No not, way. Not that, not that you're you done why. learning, but no, that I'm you tell say, you why. it kind of makes sense. Now I, I, now I know how much I don't know, and I have to keep no. learning on and on. Yes. Yes to that. But here's no the thing. No one <laughs> That's the right answer, too. By you're right. exactly no wrong. Did. You're exactly right, but, but you are wrong in, in 50 <laughs> ways. Um, <laughs> it's, it's this welder slash cowboy slash, you know... All, the, all these guys I respect, a couple of them like, I don't think I can do that. And Bill Craig, who owns Shoestring Winery, right on 246, great friend, good friend of my dad, I love him a lot. Uh, he goes, you never say you can't. You say you're the first that ever has. You know, and I'm like, badass, okay. Um, and then the next, you know, the next fold of that is, whenever I've ever met anybody that goes, yeah, I know what I'm doing, dude, run. Like, number one, turn around, <laughs> punch him in the back of the head, and, like, while he's down, run the other way. Because it's the guy who goes, I don't know, you know, but it's that old welder that has been welding for 25 years, and you're like, have you ever done this like this? And he's like, no. And, but at the end of this, big secret, so, shh, shh, this is what this is? No one's going to die. If, if something happens, bad. You can talk normal now. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. But nothing, you know, it's not like a 99 mile an hour weld that I'm putting right. on, a, on a motorcycle. It's just not. The, what we're doing is we're, we're beating our brains against a wall all year to get the best possible grape. Just like the guy who's just tearing out his heart to write the world's greatest song. You know, Chad Melville again. Why are we the offensive line? Because we, we are the offensive line that walks all the way across the field, every inch of it, fighting for it, you get to the other side. And on that one day, you know, a very talented person who can play a violin, a whatever instrument we're talking about, takes it, takes your song, and goes like this. Okay, tune, tune, woo, woo, and plays it. You know, and that is amazing. Nails it. Just nails it, but you're like standing there Quietly, you know, your eyes are just like blazed up because you're like, oh my gosh, that's it. You know, that's the song we've been hearing in our minds for all this year, and here you are playing it perfectly. And, and as offensive line, because we look like a bunch of linemen, you'd fit right in. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm very spelt. I know, but you're, you're you I'm know, sure you're like, that word means, it's one of these I'm, like old timey, like boxing things, you know, we put on I'm the, a pugilist. You're like, mm, you know, perfect. Just remember, the guy that's all ripped up, remember, low water weight, one punch down. Bingo. Um, Knucklehead. Yeah, hit first, hit hard. <laughs> that's all you need to know in a fight. Uh, when you get to that thing, you know, it's that offensive line. You get across, and you're on the one-yard line, dude. One guy runs in, you're like, here's the ball, dude, and whoosh, jumps across, spikes it, dance, you know. Okay. This is the world's greatest line, ba-bomb, and did it, here we go. Um, that's awesome. 
but we, you know, I, I dig the 300, I dig the 99 yards of fist fight with my cousin next to me, my dad right here, my uncle there, and my kids along for the tow. You know, if you rob me of that, I'll quit. There's, there's a lot of people, and it's not just, I mean, not just in the wine business, yeah. whether it's, uh, you know, uh, technology or whatever totally. it is, and they will all say the same thing. The moment I feel comfortable, that's when I get scared. I failed. That's when I get scared. Yeah. You know, I want to, I want to feel like there's, I want to be on edge. As I like you know? to say, uh, Cliff Mayer, some buddy of mine said it to me two days ago. If you're not coming for them, they're coming for you. Oh. And we, we kind of have that naive enthusiasm of, no, we don't know much. Everybody else knows more than us. We better beat our brains against the wall as a group. And every once in a while, we stick our heads up. And you know, somebody will come back and go, you know what I heard today? And you're like, what? You know? And they're like, we're doing this right. You know? And you're like, go, yeah. all right, way to go, dude. You know, another $2 <laughs> cigar, and life is good. Um, you know, oh, by the way, JR cigars, $2 cigars. You know the difference between a $28 cigar and a $2 cigar? $18. dollars mm, do not tell anybody. <laughs> Roll them on. <laughs> Shh. A lot of secrets today. <laughs> when um, did you open your tasting room? You know, we opened our tasting room. Uh, we're on February, on Valentine's Day, will be our, it'll be third anniversary, so that means we're on the beginning of our fourth year, right there. Um, and it was a spa, um, and we, we, that building needed to be rebuilt. So we actually rebuilt the building as we've been open. Is this and Divine? Yeah, Divine Day Spa, that used to be it. And we tore that out, uh, rebuilt it, and excuse me, my wife is our my wife's talent is, is beauty, bottom line. <laughs> it is. Um, my wife is the person. Now's your chance to add to that real quick. No, it, no, it is. It, dude, and everybody, brains listen, and support. This is the best. No, 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 no. I will say it this way. No, I am, just I am forever the guy that when I'm like, oh, yeah, my wife's great. She's pretty hot. Like that. Every, every person without a doubt goes, hi, this is my wife. And they're like, dude, that's your wife? Are you kidding? You're like, is she slow? Is she, you know, it's like, the, can she see well? I'm like, no, she can see fine. She thinks I'm great, dude. I've got her bamboozled, you know, kind of a thing. Um, <laughs> which is true. Um, so she's but, the brains behind the taste room. Yeah, she, she is the, she is our, my wife's father is a medical physicist. She, my wife is a, her, she is hiding behind being gorgeous and everything and talent galore. She can see things in the exploded view. Well, she, she was an interior designer yeah, before the, she was, the spot She thing, was right? actually, when she was 18 years, we got married, she was 20 and I was 22. You know why I married her? Because if she, she's hot. It, but if she got smart to this, <laughs> well, dude, I was like, Should wait a minute, no. <laughs> no. I tell her that all the time. Because it, it's literally, I'm like, I'm not going to do better than that, dude. You know, it's like, tackle her and drag her to the cave. I don't even uh, like her. No, I did. I, I, I fell in love with that woman the first That's night awesome. Night she had a boyfriend for five years. Did she have a sister? No, uh, no. That's after the show. No, sorry. Go ahead. Um, anyway. Uh, so my wife sees those things in the exploded view. She was a, a lead designer in Newport Beach when she was um, uh, 20 years old. Oh. I mean, just graduated high school when she was 15, all that kind of stuff. But when she sees stuff, she sees that exploded view where people can see, oh, I like that, or this hotel is great. Or like you walk into a room and go, oh, isn't this great? My wife can actually put that stuff together by looking at 50 billion different things and go, that's the one, that's the, the. She, is, she is the Johnny Ive or now Sir Johnny Ive, of our company. She is fit and finish, look and feel. And I'll beat my head against the wall for a year on our labels and where we're going and what is our wine tasting like and who does it remind us of. Because we actually bottle our wine, let it sit and bottle as shiners until we know the wine that we name it. And then we go back and take everything back out of box, put you it back really? on the line wow. and label. I mean, that for That's a winemaker, you know how crazy that is. Of work. Um, oh my God. But we don't know our wines yet, and we don't know how the album is going to sound yet. Interesting. You know, and, and so by tasting all of our wines, this wine should lean on this, and this should lean on this, and then where's the crescendo, and where, where's the, 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 the fall? You know, and that's important when you put you know, songs on an album. It's the same thing with wine. So my wife is, is that fit and finish and polish and perfection that goes along with it. Um, the tasting room is beautiful. It's it really, is it's my, a spectacular place to be. It's then you get an award, Sunset Magazine. Yeah, Sunset Magazine. Said, we, you know what? Me and it was pretty funny. And by the way, I I knew we weren't gonna come in first because 
our humble tasting room I knew we was weren't up coming to we were up against Francis music. Ford Coppola. Oh, and well, there's all the movie stuff. Dude, I mean, and how do pools? You, you can rent a pool? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah, I'm but like, do you know that they charge just to drive onto the grounds now? Oh, just so you know. Just Charles to drive on, not to just free. go taste. Just to drive onto the <laughs> grounds. <laughs> Whatever. Not free yeah. tastings. Whatever. Yes. No, no, no. Oh. Yeah, no, free no if, you buy, if you buy two balls, tastings are free. Oh. Actually, we just upped it from one because we actually realized that we really we were giving away. Are they the eight hundred dollar bottles or the thirty dollar bottles? I don't know. It depends on yeah, much so I like can, you. Yeah. So can we go back? You sell yeah. all of your two thousand and change case production only through the tasting room, and you should definitely go to the tasting room because yeah, we haven't even covered a, a portion of everything that needs to be covered. Yeah. But everything is sold to the tasting room. You said you have a psychotic. Yeah. Wine club, tell us about this. Um, well, our tasting room, I should say, yeah, we don't really sell in any stores. We don't sell in any restaurants. If we do sell in a store, um, it's one of two things. One, they paid the same price you did, and they brought it to their store, and they're selling it. That happens all the time, and we're okay with that. Um, but then there's places like Silver Lake Wine, who are like Randy and his family, and those people are just, they, dude, they, I walked in once with our first wine, you know, Matt Canner, who has Bar Covell, which is, okay. which, by the way, best wine bar in L.A. It's unreal. Um, Heard great things about it. Yeah, and great that's reviews, Matt Canner, and we have yeah. a really great relationship. And, and You have AMFM? Yeah, he has AMFM, and so we're the venue, and Matt performed it, and so it's basically kind of like this collaboration. But we met Matt because he worked with Silver Lake Wine, and they sent him to go find... Wineries never, nobody's ever heard of. And Is this the AMFM thing? Yeah, and then he called me, and he came over, and we were just hanging out, and he's like, can we sell your wine? I'm like, yes! You know, <laughs> like, I didn't, I didn't beg my, wine, my wife to marry me, so I, I don't feel like I'll ever beg anybody to carry our wine. Right. It's to, not that I, I won't do it. You, you, either you taste it, and it's the world's greatest thing, or, like, I've been in rooms where somebody's like, oh, pour me your wine, and then they go, they go, <laughs> and this guy's a small yay, dude. This guy's never touched a grape. This is where I become, I I'm not the snob. I don't want to say I'm a snob, but it's but like, you have where they go like how this. The, how about the realist? No, I'm the guy that goes, you have no idea what's gone into this. My dad. <laughs> yeah. You know, I want to be that guy that like grabs him by his collar, pulls him out and goes, listen, college boy. You know, yeah. like this. You have no idea what you're talking about. And I want to show you the edge of the curve kind of a thing. It makes sense. Well, we, but, had, we had an idea that on the show a couple episodes ago that it was sort of like the difficulty curve of, you know, one to ten. One was super easy and ten ooh, was good. super hard and it should be like... Marked so you know the yeah. price is based on yep. this and why because the Effort. weather and the farming and everything else. Every but how do you relay it. that? I mean, well, we don't. I don't. I don't care. Yeah. I don't want to fight that ground fight. You know, I'm just not going to do it. Um, I got. I, I, well, I going to, back to the I tasting room thing. And I know I'm the, doing it. Yeah. This is probably one of those Pinot Noirs I've ever had in my entire life. Yeah, it's pretty rad. This Pinot Noir this cab is, is ridiculous. Isn't it? So it's kind of exploding now, <laughs> right? Yeah. I've, I've never interrupted a guest once. Yeah. Not on purpose. Oh, come on. Not on purpose. Lie. That's cool. <laughs> this, is, this is literally ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Uh, it is ridiculous. And it's called which Anne, is very Northern we named, California we named, Southern California. We named this one Ann Company because we don't grow this one. Oh, my God. This is good. Yeah. This is a, a bit of a swap between our stuff and someone else's stuff. Where they're like, you got some of this. I'm like, I got some of that. You got some of this. And he's like, I got. It. And it's like, yeah, kind of a thing. Um, nice. Yeah. You may hate, you may hate this or love it, but it's uh, for the people that you will respect that do like Turley Zins. Okay. It is it is just so big and we, full. We don't make weak weld Pinot Noir. No, I'm just I'm just saying. <laughs> no nerd wine. It, I'm just saying it is really it's it's big and full. It's baby maker. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the baby maker. It's like it's so you like, make some cash off. It's like fifteen percent alcohol. You drink a bottle of that, life is good. I don't feel a thing. So how was the? Oh, you we're going back to that room? again. Yeah. So our our tasting room. Um. We we opened it because we wanted just going back to musical reference. I mean, we're talking about cash and everything else. Uh, we wanted to have a place where we would never we're not going to compete with any of our customers who buy grapes from us like if you want to buy grapes from us next year i'd love to have you but i don't right. want to compete with you you know can i put that in writing yeah, absolutely <laughs> where's, where's the camera right here. how many how many times do you want you want five we got five. five perfect done done and good price we give you good price you know <laughs> uh my dad's stoked you got to come out and visit though we love. don't pick unless you come out taste and That's give the, the only goat. way that it should happen. 
There's yeah, no other okay, way. Right, Otherwise, right. what's the point? Okay, I bet I'm that decision say, is that is our one decision then you're, that you have then you are our customer because if you come out and you check out, we won't pick for you unless you come out. Excellent. That's the bottom line. So the tasting room was just kind of this thing where we we wanted to play our own songs in our own bar, and it's kind of like singer songwriter where we own our own bar, and you know we, we I have no idea I didn't I don't go wine tasting I never went wine tasting but I, I did a little bit but I always went into <laughs> it was kind of like going to restaurants. But like, like you, you know, you guys. If if you always, if you're the guy that delivers the meat, you know, and you always were, yeah, that's good. Huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're delivering hey, the produce. Do we have to go there. I'm just sitting here. No, you're the I'm guy delivering produce. Nothing more than sitting okay? here. You're the guy delivering produce. But your this whole life you. has been from a farm and bringing it in. You know, uh, uh, the delivery area, and you're bringing it to the chef, and the chef's like, dude, you want you want something to eat? And you're like, yeah, and you've never eaten in the dining room, kind of yeah. thing, and. Uh, that was our mentality to it. But I knew that it, it, you know, from all the conversations I've had with friends and when we have gone wine tasting, I was always blown away that it was, uh, people were using terms and, and things that they were using their level of knowledge to make people feel inferior. And uh, I'm sorry, my mom's going to be super, p by the way, that's port, just so you know. I know, I um, mean. I know, you want to know. Well, yar, yar, that is, that is yar wine for sure. Here, hold on. Are you, are you serious? By the way, have you noticed how many winemakers photos on, on Facebook are this? <laughs> what is that, dude? That totally blows me away. Um, They're smelling their wine. I'm smart I know. and I know what I'm doing. I'm going to give you just yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Look at me, I'm a scientist. Uh, I have a lab coat. Um, and a pen. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> the stethoscope. I'm a crazy headshot doctor. Um, so so our tasting room really became this place where we're like, we just built what we are, and that's who we are. And nine times out of ten, I'm in there. Brad's in there. My dad likes to give away a lot of free stuff when he's in there. Cause he's like, so you don't want him around very nah, often. <laughs> as I like to say, I'm like, dude, you can do it. He's my dad. I mean, my job yeah. literally for the rest of my life is my, my dad, who is on Big Lair, um, our Syrah is uh, my job is to make sure he can farm the rest of his life. That's what he wants to do, and I'll make sure he does. Ooh. I asked him a long time ago, I said, what do you want to do the rest of your life? He goes, farm and raise cattle. I go, I'll take care of everything else, and that was it. And so I'm in this great position of my kids think stars are normal, and I can see my son's school from the back door of our tasting room at St. Mark's Church, and I can see I bring my daughter to school every day at Los Salivas School, and I can almost get Wi-Fi, my Wi-Fi from work at home, and I'd never get out of second gear. Um, that's the American dream. That is it. You know, we we eat steaks that we raised, and we make wine and share that with people that we become close to and care about. So when you said like our wine club, yeah, sometimes things get crazy, you know. But all in all, at our tasting room, it should be like this. I mean, we're at. I think we're having fun. I'm having fun. And that's Great. what wine should be about. We should be expressing, have you ever been to a harvest party? You know, yeah. <laughs> it should be nonstop harvest party. I mean, that should be, we should be drinking this wine in celebration of what we did that year. Like, you know, two, 2009, right. you know, this cab is 2009. I'll tell you what I was wearing when we grew it. Some of the crazy things that happened. My son was one years old and my wife came out and like brought us food and, and it was just insane. You know, it was it was the first time all of our cab on that whole vineyard we tore out just came online. We didn't have one customer. We took tons and tons of it because we didn't know how fast the car could go, you know, and we just <laughs> let it run just to see. And we're like, okay, cool. You know, we're well, good with a, this. It's amazing. Yeah, and this is like its sophomore year, you know, literally. Amazing. And it's only going to get better. And th that's what wine should be about. Wine should be, it's, it's the only, if I open this this bottle of wine, or any of our bottles of wine, it's the only thing, if you, if you open a beer, that's 12 ounces of selfishness. You drink your label, <laughs> you drink your 12 ounces, and then you pick how, how much you want to have, bottom line. If you drink Maker's Mark or Beam, you know, you screw off the top, you know, sadly nobody drinks their drinks neat anymore. You know, I don't put... That's turning around. As I like to say, do, do you want you want ice? And I'm like, no, I'm thirsty. My drink isn't. There you go. Yeah. One of my favorite. You ones. and I'll hit a few bars together. You'll change your opinion on that. Okay, I like that. Though. I'm not afraid of you. I am. I am Scotch and mason jar. Um, 
<laughs> and we do make it. I'll, I'll tell you about something else. <laughs> After this is up, because you, you just sell one ounce of liquor, you're going to jail, dude. Um, tune in to the wind down after dark. Right. Um, so long story short, you know, th it's the only thing that if I open this bottle of wine and there's three of us, it will be, it will be gone. And it is, the la it is the last bastion of shared experience. If we go to the movies together, we're all sitting quietly ingesting. Um, Coachella is coming up, you know, sold out, sold out, sold out. Right. But you know what that is? You're going and having a shared experience with 100,000 people, you know, for sake of argument. Or you went to this show, or you did this, and you were ingesting this as a whole in a group. And if we went and I'm like, dude, did you, you know, did Radiohead, this thing, or whatever, Black Keys, one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, or did you see this? And I was at that show. We have a kindred attachment that we love. With wine, you are opening, you are going to finish that bottle with the people you're with. You know, I won't go, this is really great. I'm going to hold on to some of this for my friends who are coming over tomorrow. You yeah. don't do that. You're, I have that relationship with myself almost every night. Perfect. Which one? Oh, wine can, drinking. We can, we can, can, can hear that Sorry one later. That. But you consume no, that, that bottle, and part. literally, you're having a shared experience. We go to dinner tonight, right? Uh, three people, three different salads, three different entrees, three right. different cocktails, three different that, a bottle of wine. It is, the last, it is that campfire. It is that moment that we get to share together on a very emotional, I mean, we smell it, we taste it, we, we ingest it. I mean, all of those things are very important, but it is, we are having a shared experience right now. And that bottle will be different tomorrow and different in 10 years. This is, this is the now of it all. Well, it's, I always say that, the, that wine making yeah. is sort of the creative process Ooh. where you get to experience it with every single sense that you have. And, and you're, you're actually, like I think of our wines, like this picture, like 1948, one of our, my favorite wines. Um, I like 1948 because this is the expression of all of our properties. It's Syrah and Cab. Capulets and Montagues coming together, grandpa and grandma, <laughs> back, two different backgrounds, two different histories, two different properties, two different everything. Right. And we're taking them and we're peanut butter and chocolate, chocolating them, them together. And you're like, my God, who figured this out? You know? <laughs> and by putting it together, going back to the nerd part, we know molecularly, molecularly, chemically, spectrally, there are flavors and compounds and tastes and textures inside this wine that don't exist in either Syrah or Cab by themselves. We know that from math. We know that by numbers. And this is just the expression of it. But none of that matters. Right. The only thing that matters is when you open it up and I go, this is grandpa, that's grandma, Saran Cab, masculine and feminine, together. Two lives, because we're at basically 1945, 46, 47, 48. We're celebrating every year of my grandparents' life. And I think that does matter. It does. Yeah. It totally does matter. And here's the thing, you know, we can get ripped off. And you know, when people are like, oh, this is my thing, and what's your angle, and all that kind of bullshit, whatever. But the honest thing is, dude, if I find somebody who loves their family as much as me, I'm going to like that guy anyway. Dude, great. I'll hug you and come on over for dinner. Are you guys looking to adopt? We actually, we, I like to say we don't, we don't really adopt, but you know what? Come on up. Dude, we, we have a barn, a nice barn. You can stay in it whenever you want. I might need a hug after this. Sure. But that's the thing. I mean, at, at the long and short of it is, you know what, you guys, you know what I just brought? I brought everything we did for 300. There's my friends who are accountants or salesmen or any other unbelievable thing my friends do. Those are awesome things. But guess what? I get to hold in my hands what I did for a year. And then I get to name it after my dad. And then I get to sell it to people who come in and tasted it and said, I like that. I choose that. Great, take it. I'll sign it for you. You know, bring it home. That is special. Every single one of these is so special that, you know, if I see somebody, it sounds funny, like when, when we kick out snobs, we do. But if somebody comes in like, hmm, and, you know, they're throwing this stuff around. And there's a, there's a girl, you know, I like, from Bellflower, California, from my hometown. And she's standing there next to someone from wherever. And they're going, oh, do you get the hints of, you know, Nutty Barnyard? Precisely. Yeah, right. And you're like... <laughs> You know, and this girl goes... Like, what barnyard's not? <laughs> right, right. Totally. Come on. But, and she goes like this. No, no. Like, we don't have tasting notes. Yeah. You know, some people get really pissed about that because it's... If you you should put music. Guided. Like, musical well, notes. We, Here are your yeah, tasting yeah, notes. Totally. Yeah, yeah, what is this? It's oboe. This um, one's... <laughs> well, we don't have tasting notes because if you work in a shoe store, you stop smelling new shoes, you know? 
if you work here or you do this, dude, your olfactory neurons will, will shut down or become used to that. It's why your coffee you drink every day is slowly diminishing over time. It, it just is. And that's why when you take something outside your realm, it's like, come boom, this is unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Because you become deadened to that. I mean, if you, if you bring me to, for sake of argument, Times Square, I'm like, uh, you know, your eyes flutter and you're like, so much stuff happening, <laughs> shutting down now, you know. But if somebody in New York, you're like, dude, this is just it. You know, you're like, dude, can you sleep with that that hum, that roar? They're like, what roar? Yeah. You know, you become, one of the sad things about us as humans is we become used to anything. And we'll, we'll make it normal, you know. Well, I have to say that this is yeah. absolutely ridiculously delicious. This port? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so the SS code. Yar, Black Flag. This my, one of my favorite bands. Black Flag. One of my favorite bands, but, you know, as we like to say. And becomes... I have to say, this is a new experience. Everyone that we've had today has been a new experience. Keith, you've been Oh, we're done? Fantastic. Sweet. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thank I've you. had fun. Thanks a lot. We had a great no, time. I really appreciate that. Thank you that. so much for Cheers. joining us. This was amazing. You guys and, have been And we, as Thank much you. as we covered, we truly did not even cover a portion of what we need <laughs> to know. cover. Please go to the Cyrus and Sons website. Come see me. And come to the tasting room in Los Olivos. You'll have a great time. And just oh, enjoy everything. Facebook, Cyrus and Sons. Twitter, Cyrus and Sons. Instagram, Sarlis and, and, and Sons. And a pirate should end in a port, right? And a pirate should end in a port. Yeah. Why be in Brand the Navy port. when you can, can be, be a pirate? A pirate. Bingo. Cheers. There you go. Cheers. See you and next cheers. week on The Wind Down. Thank you so much. Enjoy. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Oh, that should be the new one.